Jackson Street Baptist Church, it's good to see you. I am Pastor Elliot Cook. If you're new to our, our video feed, our streaming, we're still in quarantine in our homes for the most part. Uh, I know the county's yellow, but uh, 10 does not a worship service make. We're encouraging people to stay home and, and watch from home our live feed. And uh, it's good to see you all. I see you logging on. God bless you all. And uh, as you scroll across, across the screen, let us turn to the Lord and ask for his help uh, to understand his word, his message for us this morning, shall we? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come together to gather around your word, we pray, Lord, that our hearts would be open, that our minds would understand your truths, that you would teach us. This is our, our daily bread. We love your word, and we don't just gather to read it together, we gather to implement it together. May we be uh, agents of transformation in our communities and in our neighborhoods, and may you help us, Lord, uh, to share your truth with others, that many will come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Father, there's much upon our hearts and minds, many needs Father, be with each one, calm our hearts in these moments that we might be able to focus upon you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, once again, it's good to see you all. I'm wearing my red, white, and blue on this glorious flag day, flag day when we honor our country and our flag in uh, so many ways. Uh, may this day be a, a beautiful day outside, and may you get outside, perhaps for a hamburger or a hot dog. I think uh, we're going to be grilling outside today and remembering those who sacrificed so much to give us the freedoms that we enjoy here in America. Uh, this morning, I'd like to, to talk to you about uh, prejudice and racism. Uh, it seems to be a popular topic nowadays, and I thought it important for our church to consider uh, the Word of God and all that it says about uh, prejudice. Now, there are over a hundred different verses in Scripture uh, about racism, prejudice, and uh, today I'm focusing basically on the New Testament and cherry-picked, I don't know, uh, 10, 15 verses for you. So it's, it's a various uh, uh, verses, not a, not a passage per se, that I'm taking you to this morning. But have you ever been... Uh, seen racism or been the object of racism or prejudice, uh, think for a moment. Have you ever been denied a, a job because of the color of your skin? Have you ever sat on a bench on a team sport because of the color of your skin? Um, have you ever been denied access to a public uh, facility or, or to public resources uh, because of the socioeconomic background that you come from? Uh, these are indications that racism and prejudice exists here in our culture today, here in Scranton, maybe even in your homes. And it's hard to break the cycle. You know, my, my father, I didn't think of him as a racist when I was growing up, but by today's standards, he certainly was. Uh, he had no malice towards anyone, but he would call people's names. He would, he would uh, act a certain way and have certain behaviors that uh, some would find offensive. And I'm sure his father was even more so, and so on and so forth. And through the generations, hopefully it's getting better. But in some cases, it's not because it's perpetuated by the subsequent generation. If you've come from such a home, uh, you know what I'm talking about. It's up to you to change the cycle uh, that exists. And I think it's important for us to take a look at God's word, to understand what God has to say about racism, uh, about prejudice, uh, so that we can understand from God's perspective how sinful and wrong it is. Um, John 3.16, For God so loved the world... All the people in the world, everyone in it, he loves all the nations, he loves all the skin colors, he loves the sinner and the saint. He loves the whole world so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. You know, just the inclusiveness of the language of salvation and the gospel gives you indication as to 
the fact that God cares for all peoples. In Matthew 28, verse 19, uh, the Great Commission, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, right? Uh, Jesus tells his disciples to make more disciples of all the nations, not just certain people, not just the ones that you like, not just the ones who are like you, but go to the entire globe, go to the world. And there's still an understanding that Jesus will not come until all the nations have had a chance to hear that every corner of the globe has the word of God written in their own language. And I know Wycliffe, that's their motivation uh, to do the translation work. And many missionaries are sent abroad into countries and areas where the gospel's not heard because they are trying to obey this commission that the Lord has given to us to share the good news with all nations without prejudice. And it's nice to see these actions being supported by churches back home. But I often wonder, are people looking at uh, the mission field and thinking less of those people who, who haven't heard yet, as if they are a lower class of person, that they are not as worthy? Because that's not the case. They are very worthy. And God wants them included and commands us to go to them. And we should not have this attitude of superiority because we are the ones coming to them. Therefore, we are higher and mightier. If we come to somebody who doesn't know Jesus with an attitude like that, they sense it right away. No one likes that. No one wants it. No one will listen to you. So don't do it. Get rid of that attitude because it's from the pit of hell. It is not from God himself. Peter, when he was at Cornelius' house in Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, um, starting in, in verse 28, uh, we read, And he said to them, You yourselves know how it is unlawful for a Jew to associate or visit an anyone from another nation. Okay? Uh, that was the Old Testament law that Jews were to be separate, um, set apart, uh, sanctified for God. They were not to integrate with the other nations, and that, that seems to perhaps support a, a prejudicial attitude towards other races. Um, but that wasn't necessarily what was being taught in the Old Testament. God set up his nation. He wanted a pure nation so that um, his his Messiah would be born to a, a home that was uh, a descendant of David. This was all part of God's plan, not to be racist, but to, to keep the people together, the chosen people of Israel together. Anyway, uh, Peter goes on, he says, But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. That's where it comes from. It comes from our interpretations of things, and we think that some people are unclean, that you know they're different from us, and we're afraid of them. Have you ever walked down the street and heard footsteps behind you and turned around and saw somebody different than you? Perhaps somebody looking a little disheveled, or perhaps their skin color was different and you had fear. Perhaps you were walking down the street, you heard those footsteps, you turned around, you saw a policeman. Did that make you feel better, or did that make you feel worse? You see, it all depends on our prejudice and where we're at in our relationship with our fellow man. God wants us to have good, healthy relationships with him and with others, all others. In um, Continuing on in Acts chapter 10, a little further down in verse 34 and verse 35, Peter opens his mouth again and says, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. In every nation, anyone. Okay? The, the language is so inclusive of all peoples, all races, all kinds, all levels in society. Indeed, with God, there are no favorites. There's no favoritism. It wasn't because God favored the Jew over the Gentile that he, he had them uh, isolated and set apart 
It wasn't because he cared for them more than the rest of the, the nations. Indeed, he loves all nations. And even to Jews who will not uh, accept him as their Lord and Savior are, are cast into outer da- darkness. You know, and those who aren't Jews, who lived a, a sinful, awful, wicked life, but came to faith in Christ and repented, they get to go to heaven. So God, some of God's chosen people who reject the Messiah will end up in hell, and sinners will end up in heaven. I've often said this, that there'll be more sinners in heaven than so-called holy or righteous people, because those people who think of themselves more highly than they ought have no need of a savior, no need for repentance and forgiveness, and so they think they're going to get to heaven on their own merit. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's that inclusive language once again. We're all sinners. We're all in the same boat. We all need a Savior. And he died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for our sins that we could have forgiveness and eternal life through him. Well, going on to Romans. In Romans chapter 2, verse 10, we read these words. Uh, For God shows no partiality. There's no prejudice in God. He doesn't look down from heaven and look for certain groups of people, certain types of people, and show his favor on them. He shows his favor on all people. For when Christ died on the cross, he died for his enemies. We were all his enemies, again, because all had sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In Romans chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Again, that inclusive language that there is no distinction that he is Lord over all, and that all who call upon him, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, will be saved. This language is pretty plain and clear. It's making a case for the character of God. He's not a prejudicial uh, God in heaven who cares for one race over another. So if you're son or daughter brings home a boyfriend, a girlfriend, and they happen to be of a different race, What attitude instantly crops up in your heart and in your mind? If it's, oh no, what are they doing to to our family? What if they were to marry? That would be wonderful. (laughs) Strengthen the genes. Get some diversity in your family. These are good things. But there are some families that would not be happy. And they would want to see the couple break up and date their own kind. Interracial dating is becoming more and more popular. You see it more and more. My, my daughter has an interracial family and my grandson's being raised um, in a mixed family. Uh, and he's an African-American young boy. And I worry for him and I pray for him. But never in my heart did I think that my daughter was polluting my family genes. Uh, I, have, I have a wonderful uh, uh, two, two. Well, one's a future son-in-law, one's already the son-in-law. But I have, I have, my daughters have picked out wonderful men for themselves. And one happens to be an African-American. And I'm so excited uh, to be related to this family, the Cobbs family. Uh, great, great people. And to have a son or grandson uh, who bears my name, uh, Cameron Elliot Cook, is, is uh, African-American. I just love him to pieces. And I never treated any of the family any different because of the color of their skin. And I never had a problem uh, when, when my daughter uh, was dating an African-American. It's not an issue. It shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be an issue. May Cameron grow up in a society where these things are not known and there is love for all. Um, I just pray that that day comes soon. In Romans, uh, excuse me, let's go on to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. In 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 
For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. There's the inclusive language once again here uh, of all were baptized into one body and all were made to drink of one spirit. There's the diversity and yet the unity in the church, in the faith. Uh, we are all one in the faith because we come together in one baptism and in one spirit, God's spirit who indwells each of us. The Holy Spirit of God dwells in me. That same Holy Spirit of God dwells in a brother or sister of another race. The same Holy Spirit so that we are one. And to, to, to look down upon them or to think that they are not worthy of whatever you're thinking and your racist, uh, prejudicial thinking, it ought not to be, people. Not in the church, not anywhere, but especially in the church. And yet, uh, uh, others have, have made it clear that 10 a.m. on Sundays is the most segregated hour of the week. 10, 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings, you have African-American churches meeting, you have white Anglo churches meeting, you have Hispanic churches meeting. I, I'm glad that you're going to church, don't get me wrong, but I wish they were all mixed up together and all the churches were homogenous. Um, getting together with, it makes you stronger when you have an appreciation for the backgrounds, the various backgrounds, all the different strengths coming together to make the church strong. Uh, I'd love to see Jackson Street Baptist Church, an interracial uh, community. We tend to be an, uh, a white church. I would say we're Protestant white. Uh, I don't think any of you would think that we're not, but uh, we tend to be. And I think we're very open to that here at Jackson Street. So if you're looking for a church and you happen to be Latino or perhaps you're, you're African American, please understand that you would find a welcome here, that, that this is a place, even though the pastor's preaching about racism and prejudice, it's not because the church has a problem, it's because our community has a problem, and as Christians, we need to be prepared with the message of God's truth to have an answer why we don't want prejudice in our community so that you, dear Christian, are prepared and ready to go out and share with your racist uh, friends and neighbors, and they are out there, and I'm not saying all of them are. In Scranton, we're doing pretty well. Yesterday, there was another uh, rally or protest, uh, Black Lives Matter, here in Scranton. It was a very, very peaceful, respectful time, um, and the races were gathered together, uh, fighting uh, the abuse of power, and what a good message uh, that was, and what a great time for the races uh, to, to get together and be on the same page against racism. And it was so exciting uh, to see that happen and to be done peacefully, and it didn't turn into riots and no instigators were shipped in to our community to try and stir the pot. Um, Scranton's doing well, and I'm so proud of you. And the police here in Scranton, I've heard nothing but good of you, brothers and sisters serving in blue. Um, you have been very respectful and not abusing your power and authority here in Scranton anyway. But that's not always the case. There are communities uh, around our country where racism abounds, where prejudice is, is turning churches against other groups of people. And we represent Christ, and it's not a good witness. It's not a good witness. Um, God's word tells us that he loves all, that he cares for all, that we all ought to um, seek him while he can be found, to call on him while he is near. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, we read these words. There is neither Jew nor Greek, Neither is there slave nor free. There is no male or female. You are all made one in Christ Jesus. Uh, here uh, we see 
a number of things that are listed for us, we see Jew or Greek, a racial difference. There is no racial difference. Slave or free, there is no economic difference or class warfare or differences between the classes uh, when God looks upon us. There is no male or female, there's no gender difference. In God's mind, when he looks down upon us, he sees either an unrepentant sinner or a child of his own. Male, female, black, white, it doesn't matter. In his mind, he sees one of those two things. Which are you? Are you the unrepentant sinner kicking against the goads, trying to, I don't know, go your own way? In the words of Frank Sinatra, do it your way instead of his way? I'm just saying, love Frank, you've got a beautiful voice, but that message of that song, and I can think of other groups that sing songs that I don't care for either. I'm not picking on Frank Sinatra. My son happens to love him. But uh, I, I'll tell you, it's, it's important for us to understand that the message of racism needs to be stopped, and Scripture does not support your cause. If you're thinking that, that you're doing good or you're doing God's word, uh, honoring God's word by keeping the church lily white, you're wrong, or by keeping the church black or keeping the church Hispanic so you can keep your heritage pure. It's a lie from the pit of hell, and God is not pleased with that. The ground is level at the foot of the cross, and all of us are equals. And you need to hear that this morning. If you have uh, the ears to hear, may, God, may God's truth transform your heart, your life, and your attitudes, and your actions, and your behaviors. Continuing on in, in uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 11, here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, bar barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. But Christ is all and in all. Once again, we have the inclusive language of the gospel, that Christ is all and in all, all people, all groups. But once again, we see the distinction between Jews and Greeks, perhaps a racial. Uh, circumcised and uncircumcised, perhaps for us today, that would be the denominational differences. And some people would look at certain denomination, uh, they, they would think less of them if they're Methodist or a Baptist or a Lutheran or a Catholic. Uh, in God's mind, you know, he's not saying, well, there's a hierarchy and how I look with favor upon, and it's the Catholic Church first, and it's the Baptist second, and it's the Pentecostal third. No, he looks down, he sees either an unrepentant sinner or he sees his child. He sees us individually, even corporate uh, groups. Uh, he doesn't see and rank them. He might see a church that has been faithful and true to his word, and he's pleased with them, and he blesses them in a special way, but it's not something that he's looking at in, in some uh, he cares about because of their race or because of their socioeconomic background, um, you know, he doesn't care for the elitist attitudes that we have. Um, yeah, I need to get on because we're getting long here. But in, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 21, in the presence of God, there is no... Uh, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and of the elect angels, I charge you to keep these rules without prejudice, uh, doing nothing from partiality. And that's... Uh, uh, Jesus, uh, it's Jesus' teachings, but, but Paul was in that uh, moment teaching his uh, ment mentee, uh, Timothy, about ruling in the churches, that they should do nothing from prejudice and nothing from partiality. Um, it's so important for starting with the pastor and the leadership of a church uh, to show an openness, a loving towards all, and no uh, prejudice in the church. Uh, James chapter 2, verse, verse 1, James says, My brothers, show no partiality as you hold the faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord of glory. Um, we are to show no partiality. 
as, as a body, as leaders in the church, there sh it shouldn't be named among the church and we shouldn't be looking at a neighborhood or a group of people with any uh, distinction or problem. We should love all just as Christ loved all. He continues on in James uh, 2.9. He says, but if you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. If you show partiality to one, you're disobeying the law of God. There it is, plain and simple. No partiality does God have towards us. He's inclusive of all the races, of all the peoples of the earth, and we ourselves ought to have that same attitude because if we don't, we're sinning. To think that, that some would be excluded from God's grace, his mercy, or that they're not worthy, got news for you, we're all not worthy. I love uh, the book of Revelation. It teaches us much. And John uh, teaches us in Revelation 5, verse 9, he says, and they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open it, its seals, for you were slain and by your blood you re re ransomed people uh, for God, from every tribe and language and people and nation. Okay? Uh, he has redeemed uh, not just countries, but people groups, races, uh, the different differences that we make distinctions. When God looks down, he doesn't see political lines drawn anywhere on the globe to say that the United States or Canada or Chesnia or different places. You know, he doesn't see the lines drawn because there are no lines drawn for him. And there shouldn't be for us either. We should care about one another. Now, I'm not saying that politics doesn't enter into it, that there, that there are regions controlled by certain ideologies and certain, certain uh, political um, leadership that takes place in certain areas. Of course that happens, and, and that isn't necessarily sin. It can be sin. It can be done with a sinful attitude, but to proclaim that this is a sovereign territory and you're going to run it your way, and the people of this area agree to this, this is what they want, is, is a democratic way, I suppose, and it has worked for some. Our country certainly has been blessed. We're very, very fortunate. And we celebrate our country this day on, on this uh, flag day. And again, the sacrifices of many who have fought and died to preserve our freedoms and our heritage. But we do need to transform. We do need to grow. We knew, do need to change and for the better. You can make a change for the worse. And some things have gotten worse in our country, and some things have gotten better. I pray that, that racism is something that is not known uh, when my grandson has a son, that he doesn't have to fear or worry uh, about the policeman, Popo, behind him with the lights and siren blazing. I pray that that day comes, and it comes soon. And we're making strides, people, we are. Jesus died for all people. Uh, again, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, in, in this uh, passage, well, it says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every tribe, nation, and from all the tribes and peoples and languages, standing before God and the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, etc., etc., etc. They were worshiping God, all of them, together. That's why I want an interracial church. That's why, that's why I, you know, we're here telling you that you are welcome. If you are African American, if you are, if you are Latino, come to our church. We want a taste of glory here on earth. We want the, the races to be united together and to be a family together. We want to practice here and now what's going to be happening in glory anyway. You know, why should we wait Let's learn to get along here and now. Let's truly love one another and learn from one another. You're welcome here anytime to Jackson Street Baptist Church. 
Uh, it's the goal. It's, 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 our, it's our vision. We want to see all people one to Christ and that anyone would find a home here at Jackson Street. Um, red and yellow, black and blue, Jesus died for all of you. It's time to stop the hate and learn to love each other. Well, it's a good place to start with the truth of God's word, but racism and prejudice will probably continue in our community and our society unless we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We need revival, people. We need people to put away their old ways, their old habits, to learn from Christ and his word how wrong it is to be uh, prejudiced and racism, how sinful uh, this is. It does not show God respect who made all races and people groups. It is not something very loving to our brothers and sisters. So I would encourage you, if you have the need to become a Christian, to surrender to him, to ask forgiveness for your sins, yes, of racism and prejudice, but all sorts of sins. Let's face it, none of us are perfect, myself included. Let's meet at the cross and be united together. If you have the need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, won't you bow with me and pray this little prayer? Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. I need your forgiveness. I do believe that Jesus died for all, that he died for me on the cross, pouring out his lifeblood in my place that I might have forgiveness of sins. I believe it. I know I'm wrong. I know he's right. Come into my life and help me to defeat the wrong attitudes and behaviors that so easily make their way into my daily routine. Change me, change my life, change my family, change my neighborhood, change our community. Lord, spark a revival, and may it start with me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You prayed that prayer, you just became a Christian. If you need a Bible, just write a comment down below. I'd like a Bible. I just prayed that prayer, write it down below. We'd like to know, we'd like to encourage you. You perhaps have some questions about the Bible. We can help you, write it down below. You know, let's start the, the relationship people. And, and again, all races, uh, getting together to converse, to talk together, to come to, to an understanding of each other's uh, perspectives. Um, this, is, this is the start of something good, people. It really, truly is. I see the Maldonado families engaged this morning. Uh, they're watching, and uh, love you guys so much. I want to thank uh, Brendan and, and Lewis Jr. Uh, for helping me move uh, Stephanie Brandon. She just moved into a new apartment. Uh, God bless you, Stephanie, and your, your little uh, uh, son there. Um, beautiful, beautiful family starting out all over again, and uh, these young men uh, were able to help me move her, and, and thank you for that. I also want to thank uh, many who have reached out to, to me and, and my family in our time of grief. Uh, many of you have, have, have helped uh, in so many different ways. Uh, casseroles have been brought to our house. We've had uh, uh, gift certificates so that you know, we could go out to eat. Uh, gifts, generous gifts have been given so that we can give to others or, or were made in my mother's name. Uh, just, just thank each and every single one of you uh, who have, have expressed your condolences, uh, so many cards and prayers. I want to thank you and, and just remind you of uh, the many families that are facing uh, that situation as well. Um, the Graff family, uh, the Philip family, and the Fennec family, and uh, the graphs are still going through it, and there are others uh, who may uh, be going home to meet the Lord soon, uh, the Shaws. Just remember these families, these people. Reach out to them while you can. Um, we only have one life. It will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Uh, dear Christians uh, from Jackson Street, once again, the trustees did get together this past week. Uh, to have a meeting. Uh, the deacons are getting together this coming week. We are meeting. We are monitoring. We will have meetings eventually someday in the future, but I am not announcing any live services gathering yet. 
uh, you will be uh, informed as to when that happens. We want to be safe. We want you to be safe. We want you all to practice everything that's, that's being asked of you, not just social distancing, but uh, being ever so careful. The virus is still out there, and we are all susceptible to it. Doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter your health, we are all susceptible to it. And for the sake of the weaker among us, uh, we're going to be extra careful, especially here at church. Can you imagine? We want, we want so badly to get together that we are willing to risk the lives of some people. That's not a very Christian attitude. And since we can get together to study God's word, to pray on Wednesdays, since we are having some semblance of church still in the midst of this uh, crisis, um, we can weather this storm as a church we are doing well. I know that there are other churches who are going to open up. I believe there are services today in certain churches around um, town. And that's fine. You know, we, we love them and support them. And, and uh, may, may the Lord bless them with, with a good uh, plan to implement uh, getting back together. And pray that it's it's not too soon. You know, every church and every person is going to have to decide for themselves what uh, they should do as we open up our communities, our restaurants, our gyms. Everyone's looking forward to the hairdresser. Everyone's certainly looking forward to coming back to church, and we all want to be back in church. Um, just pray for the wisdom of God. Hold no uh, malice toward anyone who believes differently than you about these things. If they want to open a church and you think the church should be closed, then just don't come. Don't, don't go to the church. If they, they choose to close the church and not have the meetings yet and you're upset because you think there should be, be gracious and kind towards your brothers and sisters in Christ, but towards all people. Uh, because we're all uh, trying to do the best we possibly can. Your neighbor has no income. They have to go to work, you know. Uh, so be gracious towards them. Don't, don't look down your nose on them because they're going to the restaurant to be a waitress or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And they're pushing for and saying how we should open up and, and have uh, indoor seating and, and be normal capacity, you know. Understand where that comes from. Have some kindness in your heart instead of a judgmental attitude towards your brothers and sisters in Christ, especially here at church. Uh, we're going we're gonna to get through this together. We're going to call each other up. We're going to pray for one another. We're going to encourage each other, especially now in the midst of this crisis until the Lord uh, leads us in a different direction. Anyway, pray for your leadership. Uh, our Marcel, Marcelo, it's good to see you, brother. Um, God bless you. Um, let's pray, and uh, thank you again for tuning in. If you're new to Jackson Street, uh, you can make a comment down below. Uh, let's start that dialogue, that relationship once again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is so good to be able to be together around your word and understand your, your commission to us to love one another. And it doesn't matter our educational background, doesn't matter our, our wealth, our expertise, our knowledge, our understanding of things. It doesn't matter the color of our skins. Uh, Father, we are one in you because we trust in the Lord Jesus who died on the cross for us. And I pray that if somebody accepted Christ this day because of this message, Father, that you would give them holy boldness to share their commitment with others, perhaps their family members, uh, their church, their pastor, or perhaps down below in the comments, they would leave us a message so that we can pray for them and perhaps uh, send them some literature. Father, uh, please, Lord, you are a good God. You've given us good gifts. Our time together is so sweet and so precious. We do look forward to the time when we will be able to get together. But until then, Father, keep us all safe. Watch over us, guard us, guide us, and protect us. Until we're able to be together again, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you, and happy Flag Day. <laughs>